Welcome to the Week 7 SCPI Football Podcast. Connor Morissette and Keith the Molder with you as always. Keith, a lot of bye weeks this week for city section football teams, but this upcoming week is when the fun begins because league play is just about to get underway. And we're going to talk about some of these games a little bit, but really the highlight, I think, of, of, of the league games slate so far will be Carson at Narbonne on Friday. I know you're going to be at that one. That's going to be awesome. Narbonne, we know how talented they are. And remember, Carson gets 17 new players now because they're all eligible starting. Uh, we filmed this Monday, so starting today, I'll post it tomorrow. But by the time you watch this, those players will be eligible to go. Pretty crazy. Absolutely. And Carson, you know, they're already pretty good right now. And then they're going to get some transfers. They're just going to be that much better. I think they have a chance to upset Narbonne. You know, that, that's a hot take. But, I mean, they're a good team. Danalen Fuimano, the safety for Carson, he's going to be the transfer to look out for. He, he'll be a leader in Carson's secondary. I think he's got 11 Division I offers. He's still not committed anywhere. So he's a player to look out for. It's not like Carson's getting some scrubs. They're getting some legitimate talent. So we'll preview that game in a little bit, but let's start off as we always do with the top 10. We have two new teams in our top 10 to get the ball rolling here. At 10, we have Fairfax. Initially, we were down on them because, remember, they played Crenshaw and they didn't have their best game a couple weeks ago. They got beat pretty good in that one, but they've responded. They beat Eagle Rock. They beat Bell last week, 33-27. They're playing University this week. They're 3-2, and two, and so they're going to get some love from us. But these two spots at the, at the top were very difficult. Venice was in consideration. Eagle Rock was in consideration. Southgate was in consideration. But Fairfax gets that 10 spot, and we'll go to 9 in a second. But... I think they deserve it. Division one team, talented quarterback. They're good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've had some, you know, Jekyll and Hyde performances as of late. They've lost, they've won. As of late, they just had that recent win. But it's thanks to Scott Harris, as you mentioned, the dual threat quarterback from Fairfax. He went 12 for 17 in his last game, 136 yards and three touchdowns through the air as well. 57 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Looking at their offense overall, really humming for sure. Looking at the ground game, over 280 yards from the Lions in that game. Fellow rusher Kavion Johnwell, 200 yards on the day, so they have a great offense. That said, 21 unanswered points in the fourth quarter allowed, so that fourth quarter defense, they need to be a little bit better. They're gonna try and make it deep into the postseason. That said, they had two sacks, two tackles for loss, three picks on the night, so they're playing university, not a very strong offensive team. Yeah, fair effect should have a pretty good night. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem. They should get a W. It's at university, which could present some you know, problems. Uh, but that said, they had too much talent on that defense. So to sum up uh, what Keith said, Fairfax, great offense. Watch out for the defense just because that's really the, the spot where there have been some question marks. We saw that against Crenshaw. At number nine, the only Division II team in the poll, it's Reseda. They're the only undefeated team in the poll. They beat Canoga Park 34-18 last week. I was at that game. They got San Fernando this week. So I was going to wait until if they beat San Fernando, I was going to say then put them in the poll because right. I think that's the best team they'll play on the year. So barring the playoffs, so this game will have huge implications on the top 10. Reseda at San Fernando, or San Fernando at Reseda, so look out for that one. Um, so Reseda, they have three offensive players who are going to blow you away. Jelani Ellison, the quarterback, Mike Martin, and they got a receiver who's very talented as well. But what I've noticed from them, I've been to their games the last two weeks, they start slowly and at times they can be undisciplined. So San Fernando will come in to Reseda this week and you know, if they're able to, to not make mistakes and Reseda makes the same kind of mistakes that they've been making, that'll be a tough game for them. But they have some very, very talented players who've taken them over the top so far, and that's why they're undefeated. Yeah, it's hard to mess with perfection, and you know, it's hard to argue against perfection. The only not you know undefeated team in the top 10, 5-0 and right now, and that's to, as you mentioned, Mike Martin. Last, uh, last game he was on, 144 yards and a touchdown on just four passes. So yeah, A know, lot of running. Yeah, a lot of running as well. Uh, the Regents ran the ball effectively 174 yards total on two touchdowns. Martin 115 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, he looked great. He was playing. Yeah. He was playing hurt too. Really? Hurt up. Hurt uh, his ankle. Fought through it. So I got to give him credit. Looking at that slow start though, Canoga had a 12-8 early lead, and then Reseda was able to take it the rest of the way. And they're playing San Fernando. It's at Reseda, so I think that you got to give him the edge in that game, uh, considering it's at home. Moving on now to number eight, Banning. 
probably the, the biggest mystery on this list. They've looked very strong at, at some points, and, and they've had some close losses as well. They were off last week. They have George Washington prep this week. That should be a pretty easy game for them. So look out for Banning. That Marine League is loaded. That's Absolutely. the that's the biggest league in the L.A. City section. I mean, you're looking at Banning, obviously Narbonne, San Pedro, Carson. Whoever comes out of that league, I feel like that is your, your top seed 100%. And, and Banning, you know, they're probably fourth on the list right now. But they've shown that they can compete with some of the big boys. Look out for them. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they come in with a great stretch. They have a bye week, so they're able to recollect themselves mentally and physically. And then they're playing an easy Washington team at home. They have a great stretch right now. They're taking that in the league play. They'll be strong. Absolutely. At 7, Dorsey. The Dons were inches away from their first win at home against Culver City. They fought all the way back from a 24-6 deficit, tied the game up at 27 late on, and then the defense, unfortunately, broke down and Culver City kicks a game-winning field goal. I don't know if you saw the controversy on Twitter. Dorsey was called for yeah. a sideline warning, a 15-yard penalty. I mean, the, the refs were flag-happy all night. It seems to be a theme in the L.A. City section. So, Dorsey, you know, I, I'm feeling for you. You guys are clearly talented, but 0-5, it's been a tough start for them. 100% chance they get a win this week, though. They are playing um, LA, High. L.A. High. Yeah, so, you know, if you need a win, play L.A. High because they, let's be honest, they were really good last year. There were some issues with the school, so they're kind of restarting, and Dorsey's going to take out some frustration on L.A. High. They'll get their first win this week, but a tough start to the year for the Dons. But they showed some serious life against Culver City. Yeah, I liked what I saw from them, able to come back uh, from being down. The defense, though, they need to be better this season. It's been one of their weaker points. Uh, and 24 points for Culver City in the first half. Jonathan Martin, 244 yards and three touchdowns, while the running game added 135 yards. Carlos Barrios with the game winner. Uh, and it's it's hard to hard to try and win when you have flags all night. A 15-yard penalty on that last drive, very ticky-tacky. Charles Ross, the Nevada commit for Culver City, caught two touchdowns as well. He great in that game. All right, six, Palisades, they fall one spot to six. They were five last week. They were off last week. Coming up uh, next week, though, or this week, I should say, they play Hamilton at home. I think that's a tough game. I think that's a tougher game than people will, will give uh, credit for just because Hamilton doesn't really get, there's not really that much excitement around them, right. but Palisades, they've played teams very close. They have a tendency to play below you know, their, their competition. They, they have some very talented players, but sometimes they fall a little short. I know you've seen them. Uh, that game against Huntington Park, they were kind of up and down. Right. I, th I think Palace needed to win that one, but I don't think it'll be an easy cakewalk for them. Yeah, Hamilton, they started out the year one of the only undefeated teams in the section, and then they've lost a couple games as of late. So Hamilton, definitely a lot of talent on their roster. That said, Pally, you know, they play under their potential. As, as you said, they have a lot of really great pieces, but Turnovers have been very costly. 12 turnovers in the past two games. I'm sure that's something they've worked on in the bye week and should bring it. They have the home field advantage, and their home field advantage is one of the best in the section. Their home side is always full, so looking out for them this week. And you've been in touch with some players and coaches, and they feel like they're trending upwards. Right. And, you know, it's a work in progress, as every football season is. You're not going to start as well as you finish, hopefully, and I feel like that's what Palisades is going through, so we'll watch them this week. We... We'll be there. Palisades, the Hamilton, the TV show, everything, cameras, the lights, we'll, we'll, we'll be there. So look out for that. Uh, into the top five, Carson. They move up. Why? Because they get these new transfers. Sultan Mawala, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but an all-city defensive back running back from Banning. He'll be coming in to give some depth in the running back core. That's already all you know, amazing. Look out for Danelon Fuimano as well, who we talked about earlier. These guys are legit, and they're, they're coming, so that's a great game. At four, Birmingham off last week. The whole top five was off last week. Um, so they play at Taft this week. That'll be a cakewalk for them. Taft, uh, not the best team. Remember, Birmingham has one of the best, probably the second best non-LA City section win. You know, I don't want to say non-conference, but right. best win against the team that's not from the city section. They beat Agora a couple weeks ago, so that's why they're so high. They've looked really good. They kept it close for a little bit with Notre Dame, Sherman Oaks. But, you know, they ultimately lost that one. That win against Agora is why they're so high. Yeah, absolutely. Their strength of schedule really is keeping them up this high because they've been able to play really tough teams but also compete with really tough teams. And they're playing an easy Taft team. I'll like to see how they do playing some harder L.A. City section teams. Three, Crenshaw, bye week last week at Manual Arts this week. That should be another easy win for them. 
They're three and two on the year. That offense looks great, and pretty soon, I believe they're going to get their quarterback back, and yep. it should start this week. But you, you got to wonder has the backup played well enough to get the starting role? So we'll have to watch how Crenshaw does against Manuel Arts and who's under center, because Jared Greenfield, the backup, has looked very good. Now they're going to get a new quarterback in who had to sit out because of transfer issues. Who was supposed to be the starter? Bit of controversy. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's never a bad thing to have too much talent, especially offensively, and especially at the quarterback position. Having a solid quarterback already who's a sophomore and then getting a transfer in as well, I think that their offense is just going to reach another level. At two, San Pedro off last week versus Gardena this week. They should win that game. Think about San Pedro. Their offense, they can put up points with just about anyone. We've seen that in their the non-league losses that they've had. They've put up points. The games have been close defensively are where the question marks lie right. and when, when they face off against some of these upper echelon LA City section teams the question will be can the defense rise to the occasion because we know the offense is so so talented you've checked them out this year you've right. seen how good they are right looking at their personnel they're just so big so strong uh, and they have kind of a boom or, or bust tendencies so they'll get a pick six one play and then they'll let up a 70 yard completion the next play it's that sort of type you know type type of defense. Uh, looking at their offense though, it's probably their main strength. Their offensive line, very bulky. And looking at their running backs, just bulky as well. They're so strong, able to get through that line, break tackles, and they can run it with the best of them due to their personnel as well as their coaching. At one, we have Narbonne, same team. They've been one the whole time. They're two and three on the year off last week. They play Carson this week. We'll get to our picks in a little bit. We're obviously gonna pick that game. That's the biggest game right. in the LA City section so far this year. But the, the thing with Narbonne, they have the best non-LA um, City section win. They beat Gardena Serra earlier this season. And just look at the roster. Jalen Chapman, Jamar Jefferson, defensively Ray Scott, Darian Butler, Logan Taylor. They have some very talented players, and that's why they're so high on the list. Yeah, they're two and three, but they've also played the toughest schedule, except for maybe Dorsey. But you know, you could—it's it's very similar. Both teams right. have played very, very tough schedules, and Arbonne's come away with two wins. Yeah, and looking at this Carson game, that'll be a real test to see if they're legit in the LAC section. I think they will be. I think that they have so much talent offensively. Jalen Chapman, he's a D1 guy. He's had some issues accuracy-wise this season, but he's made up for it just as much with his leadership ability and his legs. They're looking very good coming into the league play. Recap the top 10. 10, Fairfax. 9, Reseda. 8, Banning. 7, Dorsey. 6, Palisades. 5, Carson. 4, Birmingham. 3, Crenshaw. 2, San Pedro. And 1, Narbonne. All right, Keith, let's move on to the game ball segment where we highlight the top players of the week in the L.A. City section. I know this week you have two, so we'll get you started. Uh, who you got this week? All right, so for my two game balls of this week, firstly goes to Fairfax's own Kayvon Johnwell. Against Bell, he had 18 rushes for 210 yards, a touchdown reception for 45 yards, two picks, and a 40-yard pick six and four tackles, a truly two-way player. He gets my game ball as well. Jelani Ellison, we know you previewed him. Check out uh, Connor's piece online. For Reseda versus Canoga Park, he rushed for a touchdown. He caught a 22-yard touchdown, and then he returned a fumble to the house for 83 yards. He can do everything. Yeah, he that that fumble was a block punt or a block field goal, oh, okay. and he he just the quickest guy on the field picked it up, ran it in, and of course I was filming that, and I thought the field goal was going to go in, so. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to pan the other way. He, he was too quick for, for my hands there. But he's a fantastic player. He, he absolutely deserves it. Great kid. And even the week before in their win over Marshall, he had a touchdown. And then he scored two other ones, but they got called back, unfortunately for him. He's a touchdown machine. He's an interception machine. College coaches, I hope you're looking at him because he's a very talented guy. My game ball, Dorsey lost this week. I understand that. But Isaiah Smalls showed so much heart and so much effort, passion to get his team back into the game against Culver City. Here's what happened with Isaiah Smalls. In the first half, he's playing tight end, and early on he catches a pass, gets to the one yard line, he's hitting guys, and he <laughs> almost gets in the end zone. A couple plays later, Dorsey runs it in, so he sets up his team for a touchdown. Then, the quarterback for Dorsey, the starter, gets hurt. Who's the backup? It's none other than Isaiah Smalls. He comes in, and what happens? He leads his team back from a 24-6 deficit, they tie the game 27-27, and then unfortunately on the last drive, Culver City goes down and kicks a field goal, so Dorsey comes up short. But this is the backup quarterback putting in work, tying the game up, 
not by himself, but you know he's the leader, he's the quarterback, so I, I, I give him the game ball there. And also he played every snap on defense. He gave it his all, played like an absolute beast this week, came up a bit short. Oregon State, you guys have a very talented player on your hands. Isaiah Smalls, congratulations, you get a game ball from me. I know you guys came up short, but a very great effort from you. All right, Keith, that's enough uh, gushy talk about some of these <laughs> LA City section players. Let's go to the picks now. I want to start with this game, but we're going to do the best one for last, so hold on, everyone. Number three, Westchester at Venice. Two teams are looking for wins because Venice is 2-3. and three. Westchester, I think, is 2-3 and three as well. They lost to Carson earlier this year, so I, I got a gauge on them. I was at that game. I saw Venice beat El Camino Real. In my eyes, these two teams are pretty even. Right, so yeah. Who, who, who do you think? It, it's really hard to choose. You know, Venice, they have a lot of skilled, you know, skilled receivers, skilled players. But I have to go with Westchester. I think overall Westchester is the better team. Uh, defensively, I think they have a little bit more talent, and I think they can stop the rushing attack from Venice. I'm going to take Venice because they're at home. And Westchester, they played so well on the road against Carson, taking the Colts all the way down to the wire. But then they came up just short. They made a couple of mistakes, a couple errors that really cost them. And they really struggled to move the ball at times. Now, Carson's defense is better than Venice's, so I don't anticipate Westchester having that big of a problem there, but I think Venice's offense is a little bit better than Westchester's, and that'll push him over the top. All right, the second game, San Fernando at Reseda. That's a tough one to pick as well. I've been at Reseda the last two weeks. I kind of gave the scouting report a little bit earlier. Who you got this game? I'm going to have to say Reseda. I bet against them last week. I'm not doing that again. Calling them undisciplined, clearly got their, you know, a fire in their belly because they, they won they won big against Canoga Park. Uh, so I'm going to have to go with Reseda, uh, also because they're at home too. Taking San Fernando, if Reseda wins this game, then they're going to go undefeated. They're going to run the table, at least in the regular season. This is their toughest game, and I'm just going to I'm going to question them a little bit. I know the win over Canoga Park was big, but the last two weeks they've gotten off to bad starts. I'm not sure if you can do that against San Fernando, so I'm going to take them. And then at number one, Carson at Narbonne, the game of the week. The lights, the cameras, the action is going to be there. Who do you have, Keith? I'm gonna have to go with the upset. I'm oh, going with wow. Carson. He's drinking the, the Carson Kool-Aid. Yes, I am. I'm sipping it just fine. I think that Narbonne, they've come off some tough losses and they're at home, at huge home field advantage. But I think Carson, I think their running game is really gonna control the tempo of this game. They're gonna have the time of possession nailed down because they have so much talent running the ball and they're gonna get another transfer, as you said, two transfers. Uh, 17 total, but 17 two, total. two very, very talented guys, right. and I'm sure others as well. Right, and, and I think that's just going to be too much for Narbonne. Narbonne may be a little bit weak after such a hard non-conference schedule that they come into the city section, maybe over, you know, underestimating some teams and uh, thinking that they're a little bit better than them, and maybe Carson will surprise them. So Carson has a new coach. Coach Ale has come in. He's changed the culture. The guys absolutely love him. But I think it's a year too soon for him. Oof. I'm taking Narbonne in this game. Narbonne, the established program, the home team. I know we've talked so much about Carson's transfers. I still think Narbonne has the better roster by a nose. So I have to take them. This game's going to be close, though. Absolutely. This game is going to be close. But we've seen Carson's quarterback throw some interceptions in tough moments. And Narbonne's the best defense he'll play all year, I believe. I know they played Quartz Hill. That's a good defense as well. Also played a team in Hawaii. But I think Narbonne's DU is better than those two teams. He might turn the ball over, which is what we've seen, so I'm taking Narbonne. But I think it's going to be a very close game. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to being there yeah, for sure. So, It'll be awesome. Say hi to Keith. Shake his hand at that one. He'll, he'll be there. I will be at Palisades against Hamilton. Thank you so much for checking out the Week 7 SCPI Football Podcast. For Keith DeMolder, Connor Morissette, we'll see you next time.